This research method in psychology video is levels of measurement. Psychologists make decisions on what data to record from participants and how to measure it. Some psychologists may record raw data using a tally behavior. Some might use rating scales and some take precise measurements with sophisticated instruments. We need to understand that these choices in data collection result in numerical data with different properties. So in this video, we will look at the properties of nominal, ordinal, and interval data. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. Levels of measurement refer to the numerical data at varying levels of precision. That, I know, is a confusing sentence, but as I explain nominal ordinal interval data and their characteristics, you'll see what this means. Nominal data. Nominal data is the type of data that we're using when the numbers refer to categories, or more precisely, to the number of items we have in each category, the frequency. Nominal data is also called categorical data. A good example to explain this is pet choice. I might collect the pet choice data from my class of 30 students. I find in my data collection there are 5 students with cats, 8 students with dogs, 13 students with no pets, 4 students with a fish, and 1 student who has a llama objectively the best animal in the world. So, now we've collected this data, we can certainly record and compare the frequency of pet ownership between the separate categories. But beyond this, we can't really talk about the differences between each category. For example, we can't say a dog is worth half of a fish, but we can't say a llama is worth a quarter of a cat. The categories are distinct and simply don't interact with each other in that way. Other examples of collecting nominal data is recording career choice, country of birth, or taste in music. Ordinal data. Moving up a level in precision is ordinal data. It may not surprise you to learn this is data we can place in order. Now, importantly, we're not saying the difference between each point is the same, but we can say if one point on the scale is more or less than another point. Examples are positions in a writing competition, so first to fifth height among classroom students, and self-reported happiness on a Likert scale. So while we can order this data, the difference in writing quality between the best essay and the second best essay is not necessarily the same as between the fourth and fifth. Difference in height between the middle two students in the class is not the same as the two shortest members of the class. And when reporting a sense of happiness, the difference between each point is subjective and vague. To say you're at the top of the scale at 7 is certainly more than 6, but it's likely not the same difference in happiness as choosing between a 4 and a 3. And a 2 on a scale is certainly not exactly twice as happy as recording a 1. So, to be clear, with ordinal data, each data point relates to the same variable and can be placed into ascending or descending order. We can talk about how each data point relates to each other data point, but all we're doing here is ranking our data. Interval data. Finally, with interval data, we use equal units of measurement, so equal intervals between each point in whatever scale we're using. Measuring length in millimeters is using interval data. One millimeter is half of two millimeters, and four millimeters is double two millimeters. Other examples are the quantity of a drug in milligrams, speed in miles per hour, age measured in years, and temperature measured in degrees. An important point, we can also refer to ratio data. Ratio data is interval data with an absolute zero point, so time in seconds and length in millimeters. For both of these scales, you can't measure less than zero. However, temperature in degrees centigrade can be minus degrees. So it is interval as the difference between each degree is the same, but it's not ratio. But for AQAA level psychology, you don't need to worry about that. We always treat ratio data as interval data. Using levels of measurement. To talk about the difference between levels of measurement, particularly in the level of detail we get from each of these levels of measurement, I like to talk about this image of the 2008 Olympics 100 meter race. This is the most amazing race I've ever seen. It includes the greatest runners in the world at this time. But Usain Bolt is so good. He just absolutely dominates everyone while looking like he's going for a run in the park. You might want to pause the video and consider how nominal, ordinal, and interval data can all be used to describe this race. Let's start with nominal data. Well, we can use nominal data to state the competitor's country of origin. We have three from Jamaica, we have two from the United States, we have two from Trinidad and Tobago, and we have one from Netherlands Antilles. So while nominal data can tell us the number of competitors from each country, 
This doesn't tell us anything about who won or what order they finished the race or the times. We can just say there are more from one country than others. We could categorise into winners and losers, but again, that's very limited in communicating the story of the race. With ordinal data, we could say the order in which the runners finish the race. Usain Bolt came first for gold, and then Richard Thompson with the silver, then Walter Dix with the bronze, and you can continue down from rank 1 all the way to rank 8. Now, of course, what this data can't tell you, the story of the race, that you can see very clearly in this image, is Usain Bolt absolutely destroyed the competition. For all you'd know from the ordinal data, there was an equal distance between each runner. Using interval data to record the time each runner finished the race, we can see the difference between Usain Bolt and Richard Thompson is two tenths of a second, whereas the difference between Aston for Powell and Michael Fratter is only two one hundredths of a second. So our interval, in this case ratio data, give us much more detail, a more precise story of the race. While I was editing this video, I realised that you might be asked to convert between different levels of measurement. Now, it is possible to convert from a higher level of measurement down to a lower level of measurement, but we can't do it the other way around. So for example, interval can be converted into ordinal, and ordinal can be converted into nominal. First, let's talk about how we convert from interval data to ordinal data. We'll start with our interval scores. We've gathered these from our participants, so with some examples would be galvanic skin response, reaction times, or even psychometric scores if we've taken them from a standardized test. Now to turn this interval measure into an ordinal measure, what we're going to need to do is give each of our participants a rank score. To do this, we'll list each participant from the highest score to the lowest score using that interval measurement. Any participants with the same interval score will just share the same rank position. Secondly, let's talk about converting from ordinal to nominal. To convert ordinal to nominal, we'll need to create separate categories. So, fast reaction, slow reaction, unintelligent, intelligent, extrovert, introvert, depressed, happy, aggressive, passive. What we can then do is place the highest rank half of our participants into one category and the other half into the other category. I have eight tutorial videos covering the AS and A-level research methods sections from 2017 to 2020. These videos have worked examples to every question and are full of exam tips. Patrons at the neuron level and above can access these and many, many more hours of exam tutorial videos, as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on psychboost.com. I do want to thank all the students and teachers who have supported Psychboost over on Patreon during the development of the Research Methods Unit. It's their support that allows me to teach part-time so I can make Psychboost on YouTube for everyone. I also want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support me at the developer level. So thanks to them and I'll see you all in the next Research Methods video.